This is the Happy Model Mobula 6 HD0. Having built my own 65mm Whoop, um, I've made a few mods to the Spine and Fly to be more like that one to improve the performance and the battery life. I've also tweaked the camera settings uh, to add more pop, and I'll show you what I did for that. And I'm also testing some new beta firmware for the camera that gives us a few new options, one of them being a 16 by 9 full aspect uh, ratio that will use even more of the sensor and give you an even bigger field of view. So stay tuned later into the video for that. Pretty fun flying through trees. Can't say I would have done this with my analog loops. Here's the new 16x9 full mode that uses the entire sensor. So you get some vignetting on the corners, uh, but you get a lot more side-to-side -side field of view. And I don't find that uh, I'd get distracted by fisheye because the corners are round. Pretty cool whoop. It's the first uh, 1S digital bind and fly available. Um, my daughter saw this when I got it and she immediately claimed it as her own and she started putting stickers all over it. So this is Isley's drone and she's been learning to fly on it. Um, definitely liking the drone. Out of the box I'd say it's a bit underpowered and also the uh, ESC settings aren't what I would have preferred. So with the stock settings I was getting um, let's see, three minute flight times max and what else? A little bit underpowered. Um, what I've done is I've put Blue Jay firmware on this, ESC firmware, and then I've set that to 96 kilohertz. And that has really increased the uh, battery life. So I've gone to about three and a half minutes now. Uh, and that's with flying outside. Uh, I also put these tri-blade tri props on. Uh, let's see if I can find the package for that. Yeah, these tri-blade props. Uh, 31 millimeter, 1219-3 gem fan props. Um, been working really good. I'm also using those on my homemade uh, 65 millimeter group that I kind of followed Mr. Shutterbug's designed for where the uh, VTF is on top and the uh, AIO is mounted underneath. Uh, in the box of the Happy model, it comes with an extra canopy, which is awesome because I was able to just take that extra canopy and then put it on this custom build that I did, and that works great. That's the best uh, canopy that we have for this uh, Whoop light camera. Um, yeah, and that uh, camera is really kind of the star of the show here. It enables ultralight whoops with uh, digital. And then the, uh, the HD0 whoop PTX, of course, below that. That runs down to 1S voltage. So, enjoy. First thing I recommend you do is swap out the PH 2.0 battery lead for a BT 2.0 battery connector. This is going to give you a little bit longer lead, which is useful, trust me. It's also more uh, power efficient uh, than the PH 2.0, so you'll get a little bit longer flight times with it. And you can run uh, some of the best batteries I think that we can get, which are the uh, Tattoo 300 milliamp hour or the Weebleed FPV 300 milliamp hour um, using the BT 2.0 connector. So I'll leave a link for these items in the description of the video. The next thing I recommend you do is flash the BlueJay open source firmware for the ESC uh, and run it at 96 kilohertz. That's going to give you better flight times also. Uh, dramatically better flight times. I think uh, flight times go from three minutes to three and a half minutes or more. Um, and that's flying outside, uh, spirited flying, like kind of fast. Uh, I really wish that this was installed from the factory this way, because it does make a big difference. 
Next, we need to change the camera settings. The default camera settings are not the best. Uh, going forward, there are going to be profiles for different cameras built into the firmware, and I've been testing that. Uh, basically, set the saturation up relatively high uh, to compensate for the, the small lens that we've got on this camera. Set the contrast to be higher, set the sharpness to be higher. And uh, do those things, and uh, it makes a big difference in the quality of the image. Analog cameras are coming boosted out of the factory to really high saturation levels. And you know, let's just be honest, we all really like a saturated picture. So do it. <laughs> You'll thank me later. Next, we need to pick the right aspect ratio. So this camera is going to work best at 4 by 3 uh, where it's going to use the center of the image, and you won't get any vignetting. If you want to run 16 by 9 and not see any vignetting, then you just need to use the 16 by 9 setting. But note that's going to actually crop in the most to the sensor. It's going to give you a zoomed in look. Lastly, there's this new option that I'm running right here. This is uh, 16 by 9 full. And 16 by 9 full, we get uh, vignetting in the corners, but we get uh, the same amount of vertical field of view that we do with uh, 4 by 3 mode. So. I'm going to be running this a bit more on this type of camera because it gives me the most image possible. And on the new HD Zero goggle, it's going to be uh, 16 by 9. Tri-blade props are going to give you a really noticeable performance improvement in how the quad handles and especially how it's going to recover from like a flip. So here I'll do a flip and then it just catches itself really easily um, with the bi -blade Props. It does a decent job of that, especially with the BlueJay ESC firmware. But uh, using these GemFan tri-blade props, uh, which I'll link in the description, uh, made this notice noticeably more snappy. Uh, other thing I'll point out, a little pro tip. Uh, Joshua Bardwell did a tip recently about turning on Betaflight's crash recovery feature for Whoops. And I've been doing that uh, with this DVR footage, and it really helps when I bang into things uh, while flying in acro mode. Because the, the quad will kind of just ride itself, um, level off, and I can keep on flying rather than crashing. So pretty cool. Go check out uh, Joshua Bardwell's channel about uh, Betaflight crash recovery mode. All this video, by the way, is on 25 milliwatt. I didn't find that I really needed to go up to 200 milliwatt for most of the time. I did test it. It does work. But uh, that is going to draw an extra, uh, what is it, 0.5 amp. I am pretty impressed by how much you can really fling around this 1S little 65 millimeter whoop. Uh, this wit day was pretty windy, uh, maybe like 15 mile an hour winds uh, with, with higher gusts than that. Um, yeah, handled great. This last video here is with uh, the Biblade props, but on BlueJay firmware, and then it's running that 16 by 9 full video. Uh, so, what, what are my thoughts on this Whoop overall? I mean, with a, with a few tweaks, I think it's fantastic. Uh, it won't cost that much more to swap over the battery connector and put new props on it, and then you get a, a great 1S Whoop. Uh, running digital. I don't know how well this would work for racing. 65 millimeter whoop racing. Maybe there could be uh, a spec class for HD whoops. That could be interesting. Um, it's definitely not the same uh, weight category as these super light, like 17 gram custom build 1S whoops that I've seen racers racing. But I think it's a ton of fun. It totally works. I get, you know, three to three and a half minute flight times, really ripping around outside. I, I think it's going to change things for a lot of people. Um, this is a new class of product, HD 1S Whoops. Um, pretty excited for where that goes. If you want to. Just watch the rest of the video. I think YouTube will like it if I get longer <laughs> view times. I usually don't ask for it, but uh, like and subscribe and stuff. I, I don't do this for any money. It's just a, a hobby. Um, but it does help if more people see the videos. I'm glad I could uh, share a few tips with you. I think that you'll have a 
better experience overall with this, applying some of my settings. Have a great day.